This week's episode is brought to you by our good friends at Snaffle. Snaffle is a subscription e-commerce platform for all your favorite products, from iPhones and flip phones to computers, TVs, furniture, and more. Head on over to snaffle.com.au to browse their range and start snaffling today. What's going on, man? Not much. Thanks for coming in. No worries. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Golf this morning? Yeah, I had around this morning. Where'd you play? I uh, played down at Settlers Run, down uh, sort of in Cranbourne. Um, Dean, Dean Kent's a member there, so we Dean got a few Kent. of the boys on there. Oh, man, Dean Kent. Um, funny story about Dean Kent. When he used to play at Melbourne, I remember one day I played and, like, he elbowed me so hard, like, in the bicep. <laughs> and I reckon I couldn't move it for, like, literally four weeks. It was, like, his first year, too, and I thought he was, like, 35. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I didn't know how young he was. He's, yeah. like, younger than – how old is he? Oh, he's, he's probably 27 or 8 now. Um, okay. But he's thick. He's a, he, oh, he's his nickname's thick. Keg, so – yeah, um, well, fuck, mate, I felt the full brunt of that into my bicep. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I had a good round this morning and took took the cash from the boys, which was a nice change. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it was nice and refreshing. But yeah, it was a good morning for me. What are you playing off? Ja is about twelve at the minute. Twelve. Yeah, I'm not. I'm no superstar. Twelve's good. A bit, bit better than a hack. Twelve's pretty yeah, impressive, and yeah. that's when you're getting good. I got to twenty and then like blew out back to like twenty three, I think, but. It's that grind, man. Right. Such consistency. You just got to be hard at it. Are you still playing a bit? I try and play once a week. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's humbling golf. Like it's... It is very humbling. Yeah. Do you know who's a very good golfer? Um, one of our mutual friends is Jack Nunes. Yes. Yes. He hit a hole in one at the National the other day. 12th hole, I think. Yeah. That's probably the, the one hole in, in Australia you'd probably want to hit a hole Yeah. Isn't around. it like the best viewing... Yeah course yeah. or something yeah it's pretty special so yeah lucky, okay lucky what well on you that was awesome bastard, yeah i'm gonna have to we'll, we'll, us three will go down there have a game maybe we'll bring producer sam he can he can come, come down <laughs> as well and, um yeah he plays, <laughs> off, he plays off 26 um mate honored to have you in the studio today this has been a long time in the making we were chatting early uh late last year and um and you're here and a lot's transpired probably a good time to get you mate congratulations on the captaincy Thanks, unbelievable mate. yeah appreciate it huge yeah buddy rap to um to lead the boys out again um, in the year coming, uh, especially solo. Last yep. year, I, was, I had Jank Yu by my side to support yep. me, but he's still there. He's still on the list and he's going to support me as much as possible. But yeah, it's nice to have the reins and, um, you know, hopefully it's a better year for us. And, uh, what, you know, what we did last year was quite disappointing, but yeah, we're all looking forward and yeah, keen for the, keen for the year ahead. Saints, um, you started on fire last year, didn't you? Really came out of the blocks and then just sort of hit a wall. Yeah, oh, yeah, we, we, we had a few injuries in the preseason yeah. and, and had a couple of wins early, but um yeah we probably just didn't didn't click yeah, yeah. there was something wrong um our effort wasn't there and yeah it wasn't the greatest brand of footy we were playing like we were the year before so um yeah we definitely needed to have a good hard look at ourselves halfway through the year and, and we changed a few things around and started to get things back on track but yeah it's footy out it's funny how footy works like that it, it felt like we were you know coming dead last towards the end of the year and we're in the media for for being um you know just not showing any effort and um yeah, something's wrong, but yeah, it turns out we just needed to tweak a few little things and we're back on track. So um, yeah, I felt like we were at the bottom of the earth though for a while, which is which is strange, but it's what footy does to you. It does, man. And that's like, you know, being a boy from Canberra, you obviously started your career at the Giants and you come across to the Saints. Was that like, is that something that is still the biggest shock to you moving to Melbourne? Like how much you are in this like bubble and how many, like when things are going good, everyone jumps on, things are going good. When things are going bad, everyone wants to jump on, things are going bad. Yeah, it's it's quite surreal. Cause when I was in Sydney, I I loved footy. I was a bit of a footy head, lived with, with Chuka Kelly and um, you know, we'd have the 360 on every night and watching watching footy throughout the, the weekend. And um, it's not until I sort of got to Melbourne when it was all over the, the, the TV and in the newspaper, um, and people coming up to you asking you for a photo and all that sort of stuff and that's when i really started to just try and get away from it um yeah now that i'm in melbourne i, I watch a lot of the, the the league and um my cousin's actually playing in the a league too now so um just try and watch as much as that and sort of escape and play golf and escape from footy as much as i can but i do enjoy it i do love footy it's it's you know greatest i've got the greatest job on the earth so can't complain with that but it's just what comes with with being a footy player yeah it does it's a balance and um I'm sure you're, you're managing it fine, mate, because you're doing incredible things. A few things to unpack there. You live with Chuck Kelly, Josh Kelly, obviously number one guest that we ever had on this show. You and him living together, the two nearly most handsome men in Sydney, that household sitting there watching. I, I thought you'd be doing other things than sitting there watching AFL 360 <laughs> at, at night. What was it like living with um, Josh Kelly? 
No, it was good. Me and Chuck were, were, were great housemates for each other. We were pretty clean and tidy and uh, looked after each other. Um, yeah, there wasn't too much action in that house, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it, was, it was a great experience living there with Chuck. I think we were just in Dremoyne, sort of near Dremoyne Oval there. And, um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a great experience living with him. But, yeah, it seems like a long while ago now. It was probably five or six years. So I think you were nearly his last housemate. He's got his um, beautiful girlfriend, Lucinda, living with him now. That's right. Um, who, you know, they're absolutely staying together. You were saying you're a camera boy. You love the Raiders. You're actually saying off camera before how much you love bloke in a bar. Um, yes. Den and Kemp's going to love this. A Canberra boy living in Melbourne, captain of the Saints, and you love bloke in a bar. More like obviously the beer, but the, the Instagram page, what they're doing, the podcast, you're a big fan. Yeah, massive fan. Um, yeah, follow them on Instagram and jump on and have a listen here and there. And um, yeah, the beer's also pretty nice as well. So but yeah, massive Raiders fan. My first job was was working in merchandise stand at the Raiders. So Was it really? Yeah. Um, that was a while ago now, but yeah, it would have been 14 or 15. And yeah, it would always sort of stand out um, before the game and up until half time, and then you'd sort of just clock off and go get a meat pie and a coke and, and watch the second <laughs> half of the footy. But the Raiders were no good back then, so it wasn't the best standard of footy out there. Didn't the Bruce Raiders Stadium. win recently, or they nearly won? They were in the grand final. Oh, they two lost or three to Penrith years ago. Or not? No, they lost to the Roosters. Oh, the Roosters, yeah. yeah. But it was it was a close one. Yeah, they've been no good since, and they've lost a few players here and there. But yeah, try and um, try and watch them as much as I can. And I've I've met a few of their players along along the journey as well, and they're all, all ripping blokes. So yeah, this would be not surprising. I, you know, if they didn't know this already, but you're obviously Canberra boys. I said probably 15 times. Um, apologies to everyone out there. Mate, there's not many that come out of Canberra. There's not so. many. That, well, you, Josh Bruce. Um, that's all I know. Tom Highmore, who's at Tom the Highmore, Saints, actually. Yeah, he, yeah, he was yeah, there. He was, um, yeah, yeah. There's not too many more. Oh, yeah. Tom Green. Tom Green. Tommy Green. Yeah, yeah. meat pies. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a good boy. Yeah, yeah there's a few. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um. So your old man played league. Yep. Is that right. Yeah. So you did you grow up playing league? Uh, I never sort of played competition. Yeah. Um. Dad never wanted me to for some reason, but um, yeah, always played sort of in the schoolyard with my mates because I think there was only my school in Canberra. There was only three blokes that played Aussie rules. So, yeah. um, it was a rugby union Sorry. school. Yeah. <laughs> um. Sorry about that. But yeah. Um. Every man and their dog sort of played league or union uh, throughout Canberra, so you couldn't really escape it. So I'd always sort of play in the schoolyard, muck around. And yeah. Yeah. Really enjoy. How it. much do you think that like uh, is it silly to say that wouldn't have had an impact on the way you play footy? Like, do you think it's, it's obviously benefited you a lot with that physical side of it? Anyone that sees you play, I think they, you know, always in admiration of what you, how you put your head over the footy, how tough you are, you're tackling. You think that it's obviously had a big impact on the way you, you play the game. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it does um, with my defensive stuff for sure. Um, don't know what, to what extent, but yep. yeah, it's definitely helped me, I suppose, more than others. Not just working the merch store in Canberra, but you played basketball. Yes. Nick Kyrgios. Yes. Did you play with him? Yeah, back in the day. King yeah. Kyrgios. Yeah, we wouldn't have been too old, me and Nick. Um, it probably would have been under 13s. We both represented uh, the ACT for basketball. Yeah, and he was he was, he was was a really good player. Um, he was a really skillful player. Um, he was short and fat, so <laughs> quite opposite to how he was now. But I, I distinctly remember it was one of our first sort of tournaments. I think we were going down the south coast to play a team from down there. And remember him kicking and screaming because his mum wouldn't let him go down because he had a tennis tournament but he wanted to go play basketball so his mum his mum wanted to drag him into the tennis scene and he wanted to play basketball and that's exactly what we hear about now is he's always carrying on about how he wants to go and play basketball and he's always around the NBA jersey and all that sort of stuff so it's quite funny how things turn out hey some big names out of uh, Canberra that's for sure they're all <laughs> doing good things um I right, talk us through the start of the footy career then so you at um playing footy in Canberra you're a you joined the GWS Academy at 13. Yep. How did it all go from there? Because at that stage, when you're 13 years of age, I'm assuming at that time, that was like really early of even the Giants sort of like coming through with their academy. Would you have been like sort of one of their first intakes? Yeah, I think we were the first of the young, of the, the, the youngest. We were yeah. almost, I think, I think it was the 13s is where it started. And then... And it was, it, was te- it was called Team GWS then. They weren't, weren't even named when there was yeah, the first academy. Yeah, was it academy. the blue, white and red tops? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I still have one somewhere wow. as well, which is crazy. Um, yeah, we're under 13s and yeah, each year from there sort of just um, had an academy and um, I think it was only 16s is when we sort of would versus the Swans Academy and then the New South Wales team would get picked from that. Um, and then again in, in under 18s as well, so... Yeah, I was lucky, lucky enough to be part of the, the, the Giants Academy all the way through up until I got drafted. But um, yeah, it was quite an experience. It was great exposure for, for footy in Canberra because mm. you know, it's not the greatest standard of footy in Canberra. Not too many 
players at the time sort of played, um, you know, footy. So, yeah, it's definitely given that area a bit of a lift. And, um, yeah, I'd, I'd now say with without there being an AFL team in Canberra, it's, it's quite neutral sort of what kids play now. Really? You reckon it's like evened out heaps? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, especially because the Giants have been fairly successful over the last couple of years. It's yeah. definitely um, grown a bit of interest there. So, yeah, it was great, great exposure for us. And if, if it didn't happen, it pro- I probably wouldn't be here. So um, it's quite amazing how things work out. Yeah, mm. fuck, that is actually pretty crazy. Did Who did you come through in that academy? Was there any other guys that Giants picked up or got picked up with other teams? There were quite a few throughout the years. Logan Austin, who is... Uh, my best mate. Is he from Port Adelaide? He's from Port Adelaide yep. and he actually got traded to the Saints, spent his last three years at the Saints. He got delisted two or three years ago. Yep. Um, but I grew up with him. He got drafted. Dougal Howard was a part of that. He's also at the Saints. Jeremy he was Port Adelaide as well, wasn't he? Was he was at Port Adelaide as well, yeah. Yep. Um, Jeremy Finlayson. I'm trying to think. Jake Barrett. Yeah. Who I think he wore the number 43 before he did. He, did he actually deal. broke in the 43 before. Yeah, yeah he yep. did. Yeah, he made it famous. Um, but there, there are a few others sort of along, along the way that, um, that made it, so... Yeah, like I said before, it was great for great for the area. Getting to the Giants, you got there in 2013 or 14? I got drafted in 14, so 15. Was, was your first season? Technically my first um, season, yeah. Who did you get drafted with that? Like what intake was coming through? How did you find your first season? Um, and what was it like at the Giants at that time? Jared Piggott um, was our first pick. Paul Ahern, Caleb Marchbank, Paddy McKenna, um, and then Jeremy Finlayson, so... There were six of us in, in the draft intake and I don't think the Giants had yet made finals at that stage. I think my first year, we might have just missed out and then my second year, we, we ended up making it. But um, yeah, it was great. I love getting drafted the Giants and Mel and Craig Lambert looked after us and you know we were set up in Brecky Point. Um, I actually moved in with Jeremy Finlayson and... Nick Walsh, I don't know if you had anything to do with Nick Walsh. Well, Nick Walsh is now at the Saints. Yeah, so it's unbelievable how the world works. Yeah. But, um, he's now running our strength and conditioning and um, head of high performance. So, yeah, enjoyed it. I loved, loved Sydney, loved getting drafted there and that group of boys. And at the time, I actually didn't want to leave the Giants. Like, I, 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 was, I was a local boy mm. and was happy with my mates, happy. I was very comfortable. And when I was out of contract and the Saints came knocking, I was really torn because I just loved where I was and what was going on and the Saints were really keen on me. So um, eventually, yeah, had to make a decision and yeah, went went to the Saints. At that time, I remember Giants had like so many high draft picks. It was going to be hard to keep all their talent. Um, obviously, the team was super competitive to get into. What was it like? Because you had two years there? Yep. What were those two years like initially as well for you? So you loved it there, but you were in and out of the out of the team a little bit um obviously playing in a star started lineup what what was it what was it um like for you yeah it was it was tough to sort of initially bust into the side um i think i made my debut midway through my first year i think it was around 12 against north and um i just remembered i was i think i was just getting like best on grounds after best on grounds in the needful and i just couldn't understand why i wasn't getting in but when you look back you had steve canelio dylan shield adam trelaw ryan griffin in the midfield with, yeah you know others around them like Josh Kelly on the wing and all that sort of stuff so there was just so much depth and I just couldn't break in so um, eventually a few injuries came along unfortunately and I was able to get my opportunity and and um, and play but I found from there that it was just you play one or two good games and play one bad game and there was always someone in the twos that was just playing better and it was just a simple cycle of just coming in and playing a couple of games then going back to the needful and playing mm. a couple more there so found that very tough that's the one thing I wanted to do. That was my, my, my main goal at the end of the day was just to play consistent AFL footy and I found that my best opportunity to do that was at St Gilda. With that change as well, like Giants and Saints, when it all came about, was there any part of you that was sort of disappointed that they didn't fight harder or were, were you sort of wrapped that, you know, Saints were coming knocking? Like what, what was going through your head at that stage? Oh, I was gutted. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I, I did have a, um, sort of just went into Leon's office midweek Um when things were sort of coming um, to a close in terms of I needed to make my decision. Um, and I remembered sort of just crying in front of Leon saying, mate, can you just, I want to be here. Fuck. And I knew there were others that were planning on sort of leaving towards the end of their career or when they, when, when, when their current deal was done, they were already talking about, you know, getting back to Melbourne and all that sort of stuff. So I just never really understood why they wouldn't want to sign someone that wants to be there. Because I think I was the only person 
that was sort of from the area at the time. Like I had family in Sydney, no one else had family in Sydney. I just felt like I had a great network there. It was perfect for me. So I just never really could wrap my head around why they wouldn't mm. want to keep someone that wants to be there. But not that things have changed now. I feel like a lot of the boys that are up there have great networks and great friends outside of the club. But at the time, I feel like all the boys would hang out with each other. They wouldn't really hang out with anyone else apart from themselves um, outside the club. So, yeah, that's one thing I just struggled to wrap my head around. Um, but yeah, in hindsight, it was the best decision I've ever made. So Yeah, I feel like... The next question is, did that light a fire in your belly to just go to the Saints and go like, fuck you, this is this is what I can do? Yeah, absolutely. And I felt like that's all I needed all along was just a, a crack at, at the level. And yeah. if I did play one or two games, just a bit bit of faith in me just to, to get going a bit. Like, mm. yeah, that's the one thing I just struggled with the whole time was just you couldn't get a rhythm. You couldn't find form. So um, that was one benefit and... And I was never sour to anyone at the Giants. Mm. Like, it's, it's a business. At the end of the day, you got to look back and, and think, like, they're trying to win games of football. I think, you know, if they sign someone else instead of me, then they're, they're doing what they can. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's crazy. It's a sliding doors moment. And you say, you know, we're talking about how grateful you are for the Saints to become knock and give you that opportunity. Um, self-confidence takes a knock, I suppose, when, you know, I, from my experience, when you are a player that's in and out of the team a bit. Like, how did you deal with that? And then with the news of, leaving and then going to St Kilda and like it's all like a swirl of just like I can imagine like frustration wanting to prove people wrong and become the most consistent AFL player you can what changed for you because I feel like that is a moment there where you went from being in and out to the team to going to the Saints just being like it was the start of something special yeah I'd probably say Brett Rutten was the one who gave me a, a great opportunity at the Saints because um, I was sort of playing a few games here and there with Rich Owen um, he sort of had me doing with Run, run with roles um, in my second season there and I was actually good at that um, you never want to be too good at you that ne- yeah you never yeah. Want, yeah, exactly <laughs> you, you never know. want to be too good at tagging someone because yeah. um, it do- it, it's never like you actually are playing footy too because you, you're not you're not preparing for a game as you normally would you're not really like all over the game plan anything. all you're thinking about is I'm going to stop this bloke yep and that was pretty draining doing that for probably nearly two years so um, when Richo got sacked and Rats came in um he said it straight away. He said, mate, I think you're a great player and I'm going to let you off a leash this year and just see how you go. Um, and just that sort of self-belief from rats um, in me just just allowed me to go out there and play footy. And um, from then, just got a bit of, got on a bit of a run and um, was able to string a couple of games together and I suppose it just snowballed from there. Mm. Um, and yeah, the belief that I never really had in myself came out and... Um, and there's still times when, you know, I'm not confident in myself and I don't think I can do something. But um, all it takes is for me to look back on, you know, what I have done and, um, yeah, I suppose games I have played and sort of get confidence from that. Was there anything you practiced? Like, what did you do? Do you think, did you try and talk to yourself and the mental side of your game come first and then the footy came and you played more consistently? Or did you play more consistently and then the belief came mentally? we do have a psychologist in Benny Robbins and he sort of came along the same time as Rats did. Mm -hmm. Um, And we've been doing quite a lot of work with him over the last couple of years on the mental side of the game and visualization, meditation, all that sort of stuff. Um, So that's probably helped me. That's probably made things a lot clearer for me um, and helped me in that aspect. So um, yeah, he's been great for us. And I feel like that is a big part of the game that's so untapped as well. So um He's one of the best in the business, what he does. So he's, yep. he's, he's been a big change um, in our program and, and he's been a big help for me. So I need to give him some of the credit for yeah. for that change as well. But um, yeah, it's something that I feel like he can never perfect. Yeah, I don't, I don't think any athlete in the world can sort of perfect um, you know, the mental side of things. So it's still a challenge to get things right because um, I suppose your mental health and your mental fitness can slip pretty quick if you, n- you don't get on top of it. So something that we practice... Um, you know, pretty much every day we're in the club and uh, he also encourages encourages us to do it as much as at home as well. So, yeah, I suppose, yeah, I've got to credit some of that to him as well because he's, he's definitely helped me and given me a lot of self-belief. Yeah, what what were some of the, like, stra- uh, strategies that he's, like, put in place? Because I remember now thinking about it too that you guys were doing some, like, breathing things like quarter time, half time. I'm imagining that's sort of coming from him. What personally has been, like, the one or two things that have – work for you is it that visualization is it meditation what what's your sort of go-to in that in that space yeah visualization is is one thing that i love to do um 
whether it's pregame, at home, sort of at training, whatever. Um, but meditation as well. And, and the breathing thing we do is, is, is a cue for us to all just to get on the same page and try to focus on what we can control, whether we're winning, we're losing. It just makes, us, makes it clear um, as a group what's next, what do we need to do? How do we get back in this game? How do we hold the lead? And and with the visualization, am, am I wrong to say too that like when you're going through this stuff on game day, thinking about everything, you're not visualizing like kicking a good goal. You're not visualizing like doing you know hitting someone lace out. Um, you're visualizing things like being down by a few points. You're visualizing like maybe first quarter being shit and then coming back and playing well, um, getting tagged and then breaking through the tag. So it's not even things like. It's not the highs of the game. It's more those shit situations and how you get through it. Exactly right. Yeah. Well, it's just the basics, really. Like, how does someone drop a, a, an easy ball that they've caught a thousand times at training? You mm. know what I mean? It's just because of the pressures of the game. So, I suppose by visualizing it, it sort of helps you train it as well mm. in your mind and makes the skill easier even when there is pressure. Um, so, little things like that. But like, like you said, if, if you're down, like, how do I get back in this game? Like, what do I need to do to get back in this game? I love doing it and I feel like it's really helped my game. Mate, the captaincy. Yep. As we said, congratulations, incredible effort. Um, what do you think makes you a good leader? I think just my actions yeah. and my competitiveness is what um, you know, makes me a good leader. Um, I don't think my off-field leadership has been what's got me to this position, um, but it's definitely, I suppose, my intent and my will when I play the game of footy. So... Yeah, there's definitely room for improvement in terms of my off-field stuff and I'm getting there and there's still a lot of room for improvement on-field stuff. Um, and I've, Jared Ruffett, who's, who's been on the show, he's, he's been helping me a lot with all that sort of stuff as well because he's been he's been a captain of, of the Hawthorne Footy Club not too long ago. So some people think that if you're the captain of Footy Club, you've got it nailed, but there's still a lot for me to, to get better at and improve. You were speaking about Jared Ruffett um, just before and, and his impact on you. You know, we, as you said, we had him on the show. Unbelievable character, not just on the field, but off the field. What's, what's he bringing to St Kilda and, and you especially in terms of that leadership stuff? Like just having him there as a mentor must be pretty pretty powerful. Yeah, it is. Ruffy is um, unbelievable. Um, yeah, he's obviously been part of a, a successful club in his day. So I suppose he just gives us a lot of guidance, um, the whole team, but also the leadership group um, about how to do things. Like yeah. we haven't, this group hasn't, seen any success there's players that have come from Hawthorne like Ruffy um, Brad Hill Hanabry um, Hanabry Dan Butler so there's been a few premiership players that we've brought in mm. but the core of the group haven't really experienced what it takes so Ruffy just gives us that guidance both on and off the field um, about how we how we go about things so he's been a really powerful mentor for us it's been a long time since I sat in like a leadership voting um meetings and i don't think they really listen to what i had to say anyway but how does it how does it work like what is it what's the process these days if, if you're allowed to talk about it like is it do you have to sort of nominate yourself and get up and say why you want to be captain or is it just like the team vote um on who they want to be captain how does it how does it go uh well this year we just had a sort of online vote so i think it was just a qr code on <laughs> um funnily <laughs> enough so um and what what you do is um <laughs> sort of a 10, 10 to 1 yep. system. So say if you wanted me to be captain, you'd put me at the top yep. as 10. Um, maybe give a comment why. Um, and then if you wanted someone else, at number nine, put yep. them down. But you, you didn't have to vote all 10. You okay. could just sort of vote to seven if you wanted and have four people in there. Um, and then it's sort of tallied up. There's usually a bit of discussion, like although I might have the most votes, the leadership group will think about who will be best to lead us forward. So it's not always just sort of set in stone. I get the most votes, I'm the captain. Um, there'll usually be a bit of a discussion about who we want to, to lead the club forward. Yep. Yeah. Rats, I can imagine, like being, he was the captain himself. He's, yep. you know, was obviously one of Carlton's favourite sons. He's going over St Kilda now. Um, you know, I was really lucky to have him as my coach in my first year. Right. Unbelievable. Like just when he walks around, he's like, fuck, like that's Brett Ratton. Um, how have you seen him as a coach and like his leadership? And this looks, it, from an outside perspective, it looks really, really strong. Is that, what, what would you say about him? Like how is he as a coach for you personally? He's, he's a great coach. Yeah. yeah I love, he's got, he's a, he's a footy head. He loves footy he so loves much. Footy. Um, but his leadership as coach has been great since he got to the club. He's definitely changed the club and um, the dynamic of it all because he, he is such a family orientated person. Yeah. Um, 
he has so much time for everyone. He's friends with everyone. He jokes and laughs. Um, but at the same time, he has quite an edge about him as well. He's quite scary when he wants to be. So I feel like he's got the balance right. Um, and yeah, as a player and as a captain, I just want to do right by him and want us to win and perform for him, which we probably have done, but we've let him down as well. So it's up to us now. It looks like he's trying to, like one thing I love about coaches now is like innovation and like just doing new things. And think about St Kilda now, you've got like Ratsy obviously leading the charge. You've Billy Slater was there last year. I don't know if he's, he's still there this year. No, COVID, COVID cut him. So COVID cut him, yeah. sorry, Billy. But he was doing some great <laughs> things there with like tackling and footwork. Yep. And then another, you've got a new director of coaching that's actually come from like soccer. Is that right? Or Scotland? Uh, yeah, Ernie. Yeah. Um, Ernie Merrick. Yeah, Ernie he, used Merrick. To, he used to coach uh, Melbourne Victory a while back. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he's quite experienced. And he's sort of just mentoring rats and that, um, that coaching group. So, um, yeah, I think it's important in footy. If you just got to get you know, bits and pieces from, mm. you know, from everywhere just to, to um, give you perspective, I suppose. But, um, yeah, I feel like at the moment we've got a great mix of coaches and, and people at the club that are willing to buy into something bigger than themselves. So um, I feel like for us, the best is ahead. So we're really looking forward to the future. I'm buying in. Jaron Geary, um, obviously one of your, your co-captain last year, he's been one of, you know, St Kilda's leaders through a pretty shit, like a tough time, really tough time. Um, it, I, you know, I've met him a couple of times. Such a good dude. Like, what would you say about Jaron Geary and like what he's been through the club? His body has taken an absolute beating. I still get tingles thinking about that corky he copped. I don't know if it was last year or the year before, and that to literally cut his leg open to let it breathe. Yeah, um, he's he's a warrior, and he has been for for so many years. Um, but I think the other day I was talking to him, having a chat, because he's he's had a shoulder reconstruction in the off season. Well, sorry, it was midway through last year he had it, but he's had a few troubles with mm. it. Um, and he was saying he's had like, in his football career, he's had 26 or 27 surgeries. So his body's been through the ringer. Um, but like you said, over over this period, over, over the um, the last decade, I suppose, he's he's been one that's just, in a way, put the club on his back and um, you know done whatever he could to get the club out of the hole. But he's um, he's been super and... Yeah, we love Gears. He's, he's he's such a warrior. I always give it to him though. My first goal and first win was against the Saints, and I took a J- Jeremy Cameron got the ball at the top of the fifty, <laughs> and belted it in, and I took a contested mark on Gears a in the hanger. full pocket. No, nah, it wasn't a hanger, <laughs> but if you ask Gears, the ball went up, and I I took the mark, and he reckons he got the biggest piece of it, and it didn't budge. So. Jukes. Juked it, went yeah. back, slotted it. Steel jukes. That's saying something, man, because he, he's probably one of the players in the AFL that I would genuinely, if he came to me, I'd just give up straight away. Yeah, he's like that because he's, he's, he's so fit and hard and strong. But it's funny how um, things work out. I was taking marks over him, kicking goals, and next thing you know, we're co-captain. So it's quite funny. Mate, what about the, the next sort of brigade coming through at the Saints? Give us an indication on some of your favourite players that you've seen, who's going to be maybe pushing for senior selection that we haven't heard of. Um, or some just a young guys you got in the draft that you're really excited about? Well, one I think that's going to probably surprise a few this year is Hunter Clark. Oh, I love him. Um, he's such a special player. He's so silky and smooth, and he's got that, that Bonzapelli Pendlebury sort of um, rhythm about him. Um, Will he move more up into the midfield? Yeah, he'll sort of play more in the midfield. He's been sort of stuck on a halfback for a couple of years, um, but he's ready to go. I'll also say Mitch Owens, who was one of our NGA um players yep. uh he he's he's looking really good he's a inside mid um stronger than me um embarrasses me at times that's for really? sure um and then we also got uh nasiah wanganeen miller yes um who's just got an unbelievable kick he's got great skills and um yeah not sure when they'll play or if they'll play this year but i'm really looking forward to them in the next couple of years that's for sure um mate i can't believe i've just gone blank on this but there's a guy i this is so embarrassing being on a footy show. There's a guy that um, plays the Saints hard as nails, plays in the back line. I love watching him play. What's his? Um, he's in the leadership group, but he was like a late draft pick. Callum Wilkie. Callum Wilkie. Yeah. One of my favourite players to watch. Yeah, What's he like? Yeah, he's, he's a ripper. He's, yeah. yeah he's, he's a great fella. Yeah. Um, yeah, one of my good mates. Um, but yeah, the accountant, he's, he's very well played. Yeah, he's just like, yeah. just like a very straight shooter. Like yeah. I, he's just looks very clean cut yeah. and just. Well, he's actually an accountant. Like he's actually an accountant. That's what, he was, he, really? that, that's what he was doing um, before <laughs> footy, which is just funny. So I always, yeah, I always just call him the accountant. 
Um, cause he's just very well measured as well. Like he's just, yeah, very strong. I don't know, but yeah, he's mate, another one underrated. Yeah. Um, and I don't think he's missed since he, since he got drafted three years ago, he hasn't missed a game. So he's another one that I feel like he's just about ready to take the next level. Yeah. No, it's, it's a very, I'm going to say this now, but I think we have been sleeping on the Saints a little bit. Had a year that you sort of, we can't, yeah, we, we can't, we can't keep saying that. Though. No, it's you gotta, can't. It's yeah. Give. That's yeah. true. Yeah. You do have to give, but you, yeah, you got to take it to the next level. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, plays in the AFL that you, you like, that you watch, you, you model your game on. Is there anyone out there that you go, you know, this is how I really want to model my game or are you just going, nah, I Jack Steele, that's me and I'll do my own thing. Oh, there's, there's bits and pieces. Like I've obviously tagged a few people over the journey and, um, Nat Fife is always a very t- like he's so tough to play on because he's just so big and he just moves so well. He's so good overhead, um, so I always find he's one that I just cannot play on. Mm. Um, Paddy Cripps is always a pretty tough matchup as well. He's just an, an animal. I'm looking forward to seeing him get back to his best in the next couple of years. Um, even Tommy Mitchell, like there's there's so many that I've played on, but yeah, I'd say I just try and go out there and, and try and be myself as cliche as it is yeah we love um that. yeah yeah we love that yeah, we, <laughs> we do love that yeah <laughs> um they're just trying yeah trying to do it my way i suppose speaking of um the saints as well like what what makes that place so special i know it's been a long time since it has been success like at the top but um you know the way that you, you speak about it you obviously love the club so much and you, you know you're the captain now so there's obviously a lot of heart and heart involved yeah love love the club and i'll just love the, the history like you said we haven't had a, a successful run I think we've won one flag in nearly 150 years of footy. So, um, yeah, it would have been nice to have won a few more times than that. But um, the fact that we still have such loyal fans is is quite amazing. Mm-hmm. And it's a credit to them. It's it's awesome how they sort of stuck by us throughout the years. And um, even just the history um, in terms of the players, some of the, the greatest players of, of the game have sort of played for the Saints. And it's awesome to sort of just walk in and, and see their names around the club and... Um, on the lockers, like that's the coolest thing is, is walking into the locker room and, and seeing um, like the G train sort of was the last one to have their name up on the locker before me. So it's just cool to see all the history in the club and fans are the best. Those um, ex players that you know have had that nearly had that success, like G train, really all those sort of guys. Do they still come down and get involved? Is that something that you know? Do you see them around the place? Yeah, yeah. There's um, Aaron Hamill. Um, he was at the club. He, he's he's now gone to yeah. Coach Carlton. Do you know um, I cried when he left? Carlton. Oh, are you kidding? He was like my favourite player of all time when he left. He left Carlton to go to the Saints. Right. And that was like, I remember that was like my first memory of like football when your favourite player leaves your club. Yeah. 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 So um, I'm still pissed off. Oh, that. mate. Yeah. And he's a, re- a Canberra fella. He's from Canberra. Is he really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so no wonder I write that down. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, so he was he was our our coach, our, one of our assistant coaches for a long time. And ever since I got to the club, he was really great at, at bringing old players back and even just teaching me about some of the history of the football club old stories um as well as danny frawley when he was there too yep. so sammy was was great at sort of bringing but like g train um milney all those sorts of blokes he'll try and bring him back bring yeah. him back and we had this this program for a while called the the crest brotherhood program where um you'd basically be put into groups and say for like max king and um Ron marshall sort of our like key forwards they'd be in a group with stewie low like um, so that would sort of get a time that you sort of have to go out That's sick. once or twice a, I don't know, a season and just go get dinner with Stewie Lowe and he'll sort of talk to you and get a bit more of a friendship and a bit more of a bond. Cause that's something that I feel like, um, happens when you're, when you're gone, when you're done with footy, you walk out the doors and you don't feel welcome. It's not your home anymore, mm. which it shouldn't be like that. So Sammy was really good at making older players feel comfortable coming back and having a connection with the, the current players. So we, we probably haven't got that program up and going just yet, but I'm, 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 uh, I'm hoping that someone um, can get it started and get some old players back. You alluded to Danny Frawley before, who's just an absolute superstar and, and widely renowned as one of the best blokes in footy. What what impact has he left on on the Saints and yourself? Uh, he he's had a massive impact um, on our footy club. Obviously, um, I only got the chance to meet him a few times, and I do remember the first time that I met him. He was just he just wanted to know everything about me, but he just put so much time and energy into me, and I just thought this bloke is like an unbelievable person. Um, and he's done so much for the club, obviously captain the club for, for so many years, but his legacy is, is now living on with the, the Danny Frawley Centre that's being built down at Moorabbin, yeah. at RSA Park, sorry. Um, and I think it's opening on March 1st, but it's it's going to be great for, for us, 
um, the Sakilda community and past places sort of come down and use it. And yeah, what is it? Um, what, what's the facility? What's, um, what's there? It's a health and wellbeing centre. It's sort of just attached to our facility in yeah. RCA Park. Um, yeah, but it's got a recovery centre in there. It's got psychologists in there. Um, oh. So it's gonna we're going to be able to use it as players. The community is going to be able to come in and use it as well. Um, yeah, past players are going to be able to come down, and there's a there's a big grandstand there as well to watch us train and, and play when we when we get the chance. Yeah, shit, Sammy off the screen. He's just done some very good googling here. It's got a 25 meter lap pool, hydrotherapy pool, high tech recovery center, community gym, and it's got a host of psychologists, researchers, and program operators. That's fucking impressive. Yep. So yes. Yeah. Saints have done that in his name to help the community out. Yeah, it's going to be great for us as players. Security community, you're going to love it. Um, you know, it's going to make the Frawley family and Danny pretty proud. Yeah. No, mate, he's made for the lasting, lasting legacy on the AFL and, and Saints and everyone that's that's uh, that's ever seen anything he's done and even the people that have, have been able to meet him. Um, mm. So, yeah, he's doing incredible things. Hey, one thing I love about you, we were speaking about earlier about um, your leadership and you're saying that it's, it is on field. One thing I've noticed, I know you're an extremely humble man and, and you you know, you might not even admit it, but stepping up in, in last quarters, any Saints fan that follows this would know that you get the book, you try and really mow the boys over the line. You do a good thing. Is it active? Do you think about that or is it something that sort of comes natural to you? I feel like it just comes natural. Um, I'm a pretty competitive person and um, I'm the captain of the club. So I want to win. I want to, I want the team to win. Um, so yeah, nothing, nothing conscious. So it, it just, it just sort of happens. It's in, involuntary. And I feel like everyone's the same. Mm. Everyone's out there trying to do their best and win. But um, yeah, I feel that bit more responsibility when, when I'm the captain, that's for Is, sure. In terms of that as well, like stepping up, we're talking before about self-confidence. Is there like a game that sticks out to you maybe when you first got to the Saints or, or whenever it was, when, you know, it wasn't even about getting the possessions or kicking goals or maybe it wasn't the on-field display, but deep down you're like, fuck, I'm, I know now I belong. Like it was a game where you just were like, yeah, this is this is me now. I, I reckon I can match it with the best. I think I, I, I tagged. It was my first time I ever tagged actually. I'd tag Luke Shuey. And I'm not sure what, what he had, but I think I had quite a lot of it and a couple of goals and a couple of tackles. And yeah, I think I, I, I kicked the goal that, that, that sort of got us up in the last quarter and we ended up winning. And from then on, I think I was still quite a young player at that stage mm-hmm. and there were some big players playing like Joe Montagna and, and Rui were, were playing in there last year. And I remember them just coming up to me and just like getting around me. Like, yeah. oh, fuck, I've made it. I've, like, I've finally gotten there. So... Um, that definitely helped. You still sort of go up and down, and my like footy's a roller coaster. One week you'd be, you'd be up like that and think you're the best player in the planet, but um, the next week you'll be sort of, you know, you get leveled out. You a bit. get leveled out pretty quick. So that's one thing that I've tried to do over the last couple of years is really focus on not reading into your performance. Mm. Like if you play well, great, but don't think you're the best player on the planet. Um, you know, if you play well, who cares? It's, it's like the saying, "What is it? The equilibrium." Well, yeah. Well, they're yeah. never. As don't get too high. Don't get yeah. too low. Yeah. yeah, you're never as good as you think. Yeah, like the um, as you think. the Chinese farmer. You heard that story? I love that story. Yeah. Can you tell that to me? There's a there's a Chinese farmer that one day his horse runs away, mm. and the neighbours come over and say that's no good, and he says, well, maybe. Um, the next day, the horse comes back with ten other horses, and the neighbours come over and say, well, that's good. And he says, well, maybe. Uh, the next day. Um, his son is trying to break these horses in um, and ends up breaking his leg. The neighbours come over and say, that's no good. He says, well, maybe. And then the conscription officers come over um, to sign his son up for the military, but he can't go because he's got a broken leg and the neighbours come over and say, well, that's good. He says, well, maybe. And it sort of just teaches you never to read into anything that's happened. Um, you know, Everything's in front of you. You never know whether the result's going to be good or bad. Um, going forward I suppose so that's that's one that I always sort of think about if I've played a good game or if I've played a bad game just try and think about um, the position I'm currently in and, and where I can go from there oh man that was good you nailed that yeah you like that one? have you used that one before uh, no no, no, okay. no I, like, I thought that might come out for a few beers around the table and sort of, <laughs> that's your go to sort of tell a story no god no very good very yeah, good wow. um, that was for me like even in life now is my biggest challenge and not so much thinking like I'm the best or thinking I'm the worst but not getting too high, not getting too low. Because as soon as I, as soon as something good happens, like I bring myself back down straight away. But I've got to actually get better at 
when shit things happen, bring myself up. I think yeah. that's actually a bit harder. Oh, and that's a struggle for, for most people. Yeah. Really. And that's a struggle for young players when they come in and they might kick a couple of goals and go on social media and all of a sudden they got a few more followers and AFL's posting about them. And then the next week they have a stinker. Yeah, it's the constant, oh. it's the constant roller coaster that that players find themselves in. So you know, gotta I, be careful. Definitely, I put something up the other day, and I was like, "Oh, doing these new bonus episodes, um, you know, who who's enjoying them? Like, what do you want to see?" And you know, probably two hundred people would have been like, "Yeah, cool, mate, love them, love them." And there was just one person who was like, "Nah, they're shit." And I was like, "I should probably stop doing them." <laughs> you know, I was like, "Why the fuck? Yeah, would, why oh, would the fuck would I it, let it, one it, person it, yeah, it tell me they're shit?" Person, and yeah. I just just like ignored the hundred ninety nine people, and I was like. Fuck me, Mr. Johnny 69 with yeah. a Holden Commodore and he thinks it's shit. Like, I should probably stop. I was like, what the fuck? Why is this happening? Yeah. It even rattles, um, yeah, to hear that that's something that, yeah, it, well, it's obviously something that everyone goes through, but, um, yeah, it is it is that. It's a yeah. Chinese farmer. Social media is a pretty good thing for that. Do you, do you try and, like, I know you're on social media, but do you sort of stay off it as much as you can or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I have it, but yeah, but I don't, I wouldn't say I use it that much. Yeah, you're not uh, an active user? Not really. Like, a don't have any um, notifications on my phone. So if, if I want to go on the app, I'll go on the app and the notifications will be there. But yeah, I don't have them popping up on the phone. So Hey, when we um, put out like for the show, we always have people that want to come on, uh, you know, requests for you want to come on. Jack Steele is easily our number one requested person no to come way. on the podcast. You're a humble guy. Why do you think people love you so much? Is it because, do you think it's because you're so mysterious? Do you think you've got a bit of mysterious about you? I don't think I'm mysterious, but <laughs> I probably haven't done too many things like this. People, yeah. people probably just want to know me and hear my voice a bit more and mm. understand where I've come from and how I've gotten to where I am. So, yeah, that's I suppose it's good to hear. Yeah, people, people want to he- hear from me, but I'm I'm pretty boring. Like, yeah, don't no get much, there's don't no get too high. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, we're talking before about um, business off field. Obviously, the captain of a footy club. Have you got anything going off field at the moment? Um, have you, are you studying and, and what's your thoughts around sort of like life balance with, with that? Not studying at the minute. Um, been helping a mate out with a little uh, vintage business called Primetime Pickups yeah. here and there. So um, I, you know, I give, him a, yeah, give, yeah. Him, give him a hand here and there. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been trying not to put too much food on my plate with, with that stuff outside of footy. Um, over the years, I've sort of done a few little short courses here and there and found that it, um, you know, just put too much pressure on me and mm. I'd put too much energy into those. Um, I've always sort of wanted to study and go to university like a lot of players do, but yeah, just sort of exams and like just assignments, all that sort of stuff just just really stressed me out. And I just thought while I'm in the position I am with footy, I might as well just try and put all my eggs in that basket without being silly, Yep. Um, which I suppose it has worked out the last couple of years. Um, and now I've signed sort of a, a long-term contract extension. So... I do have a bit of time to think about what future looks like for me. Um, and I'm thinking about doing a bit of work experience within the fire department um, over the next couple of weeks as well. So try to get that ball rolling because that's something that I've wanted to do since before footy. But yeah, just trying to keep things rolling and simple and, and just focus on footy. So fire department though is interesting. My neighbour when I was growing up was the head of the deb- fire department in the region. So um, ever since I finished school, I was just keen to sort of get in the fires because um, just sounded like a good gig and... Um, yeah, he sort of said to me straight off school that, look, you're not going to get into it, probably 23, 24, um, just because you need a bit of life experience before they sort of start to take you seriously. So, yeah, ended up getting drafted. And then um, a couple of years ago, I sort, sort of thought it might be a good idea to try and work towards that. Yeah. Um, so there's, I suppose there's things you can do to work towards that and sort of just do a bit of work experience within a fire department. He's one of them and tick off your truck license, um, you know, keep your first aid ready to go and just sort of little things here you can just sort of get ready to to do it and you can do those um, like aptitude tests because that's what they do when you first get in there which is yeah. pretty hard to, oh, to complete fast. from yeah. what I've heard so you can do sort of practice ones of them which um, I might be able to do through the AFLPA I'm not too sure but um, yeah some little things just to tick off along the next couple of years how do you go with um, claustrophobia hate it yeah I watched, I'll tell you what I watched recently, The Rescue. Have you seen that? We had him on the podcast. Yeah, that's right. I was having like full-blown panic, at the, just listening to the story. Like yeah. it is it is unbelievable. Um, if you've seen the, the Rescue, you know, you don't have to listen to the show. I would employ you to do it though. There's, there's a lot in there that you uh, that isn't in the show. But um, his story is unbelievable. I actually went to, as I said before, got back from Tasmania. And I don't know why the fuck I did this, but ever since I left footy, you know, you don't really get to challenge yourself as much as, 
you do in those camps um, when you're, you know, not in the system anymore. So I went on this camp. It was like a resilience camp. David Butterfant runs them, who used to be my performance manager at Carlton. And um, the first day we got there, I, I went there, only knowing my brother-in-law. And the first day we got there, we went to this place called Moles Creek in Tassie, in, down near Launceston, and we're doing caving. And, man, I literally nearly fainted. Like, the woman um, was like, are you okay? Like, da 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 Anyway, I ended up going down there and I, I reckon if I was with my mates and I was with my friends, I wouldn't have done it because I would have been like, oh, you know, like I don't care what they say. But I was with 13 complete strangers who were all doing it and had absolutely no like say in whether I was doing it or not. It was one of the <laughs> most scary things I've ever done. But in saying that, I'm so proud of myself that I did it. Yeah. Um, I couldn't even do MRIs when I was playing footy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if I did something wrong, I'd just pretend I wasn't injured. Oh, yeah. They are pretty scary though. Yeah. So that's in the fire, just to let you know, just to that's, I think there's a, there's a test in the fire brigade for that. Okay. Yeah. So maybe you might have to rethink that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Victory. I might have to. Uh, mate, to finish up, what's uh, your goals for the season? What's, what would be an ideal situation to get out of it, both from the Saints and personally for yourself? Well, I just want us to make, to make finals again. We, we experienced that in 2020 when we were playing in Queensland. Um, and that was just awesome. It was a great experience. Mm. Um, we were able to win one. Uh, we got knocked out by by Richmond, who were they eventually won it. Um, but yeah, geez, it's just a different different brand of footy. So, I'd love to get back there. Um, and personally, yeah, I'm not not too sure. I just want to keep doing what I'm doing and mm. leading the team forward and giving us the best opportunity. So, yeah, hoping things go well for us this year. Jackie, thank you so much for coming in today. Um, it's been an honor, mate. Honor, honor to meet you and um, and have a chat and learn about your career, learn about your story. Super excited to see the Saints go this year. Um, super excited to see you go this year and, and hopefully get some some more success for those Saints fans out there. And um, obviously a big family member of the show now. You're part of the alumni. And um, you know that when I do that, I was already on the bandwagon, but I'm fucking really riding it hard now. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. It's been great fun. Do you want to play golf soon? Absolutely. Love it.